Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. Also, if you get a chance, please check out the website. There's lots to see and do there, and it's all free, of course. I want to give a shout out to Jackson, and thank you for doing the film clip of putting a community sticker on your car. This little guy's really cool. He ended up on the community and his dad was filming him putting a Slade sticker on the car. How cool is that? Thanks, Jackson. I appreciate you. Okay, today we're going to go ahead and test the thermostat, talk about the function of it and why you should have it on. Even if you're in a hot climate, it don't matter. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that, test it and show you how to do it properly. Let's get on it. And also, yes, Something else. I talk a lot, huh? I wanted to thank Adam Gray for sending me this really, really nice roller pedal. And he also sent me, whoops, some stickers. He sent me two of them. Here, let me show you stuff. Is that not cool or what? He sent me two of these stickers and a very high quality this thing is nice. We'll go over it in another video. Roller pedal. This isn't some piece of crap that fits loose or wobbles. He even did a video on it for me. And this thing is heavy. It came from Topline. I don't believe they're doing them anymore, but he was able to, to get them to make two of them. And he sent one to me and didn't ask for anything. So he's getting a t-shirt in the mail. Thank you, Adam. I really appreciate it. I've talked a lot. I know. Be nice. We have the thermostat, the bracket, and the nuts and bolts where it came off of the engine. Now I got to clean this all up real nice and put it back in the bracket so when it expands it doesn't go too far during testing. We're going to go over a lot and I'll talk with you after I get this cleaned up. It'll take me a minute of why you should have this. It's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Let's clean this up real quick. I'll be right back. Now, I'm sure the most of you already know this, but just in case you don't, don't go hitting this with a wire wheel or anything, okay? You can see how nasty this is. It's pretty caked with crap from oil leaking over the years, etc., etc. So, we're going to clean this up real nice. Now, the bracket, we'll go ahead and wire wheel and clean that up and paint it black. I'm not going to paint it today on film, obviously, while we're doing this. I'm going to try first some brake clean and see if we can scrub it with these dollar store brushes. So let's do that first. I don't think much came out of that. Er, it sprayed me in the eyes. It worked out time. I have a little, oh, that's working, a little brass brush because you don't want to ruin this. I hope this is shown on film, but that's from years of oil leaking and not taking care of it. So let's just, I'm hoping this is a good thermostat. We'll find out as soon as we go through the procedure. And while I'm cleaning this, I'm going to tell you why you use the thermostat. Okay. For one reason, it regulates the heat how it's supposed to in the engine. For the cylinder heads, the jugs, etc., etc. Even if you're in a hot climate, you're going to want the thermostat hooked up. The flaps, like you see here, are what stops heat, lets a little heat through, a lot of heat through, or no heat through. Okay, so you definitely want them working. I know some say, I've went years without a thermostat and no flaps and left them all off of there. Well, good for you. That's fine. I'm not here to argue. I'm just here to give an opinion. And the thing is, is it can cause premature cylinder wear without the proper heating up procedure. They're on there for a reason. Trust me. I'm not saying I know everything, but I know a little bit about this. So you definitely want to run one. Awesome powder coat sells the Reman ones, they're German. They look just like this one. So if you need a new one, hopefully I don't, 
then you will go through them. I'll be right back. I'm going to blow this off with the compressor. All right, I cleaned this all up. You want to take a look? I'm not done cleaning yet, but it's clean enough to test. We got all the crap off of it, so it looks a little bit better and I wire wheeled the bracket up. We'll go ahead and paint it, but not right now. We're more about functionality right now and see what it does. Now, right now it's in a collapsed position, okay? So what I'm gonna do, you can do one of the two ways. You can use a hairdryer or a heat gun and heat this up to see if it expands, okay? When it expands, it pushes the rod up in the up position, I'm sorry. <laughs> When it comes down and it cools down, obviously, then it pulls the rod back down with it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and see if this expands. I believe when they fail, they fail in the open position. They should anyhow. But let me try something else. We're going to get a cup of water and the water will be heated to about 160 degrees. I believe that's when these open and we're going to test it that way. Be right back. Okay, while I'm putting this together and I'll tell you why you need to, I went and borrowed a, uh, well, I took a Pyrex bowl from the kitchen while Heather's not around, <laughs> and I put it on a hot plate to heat the water up. I have a thermostat here, so we can check the temperature, and we're gonna get it to around 160 Fahrenheit. Uh, I believe that's what it is without checking. Don't go too hot because you don't wanna break it. Now, you can use a hairdryer you can use a heat gun. And the reason I'm not today is because I don't want to go too hot with it and damage it. So as the heat starts to turn up a little bit, like 80 degrees, 90 degrees, you know, 100, it slowly starts expanding and it fully opens, I believe at 160. So we gotta put this together now. I'm bringing you in close while I put it together. This is the bracket for it. Now, as you probably all know, this is where the rod threads in that controls the flaps, open to close. And I'll show you that in a moment. So put this in this bracket before you expand it. You don't want it to expand too far and break it. Let me make sure you're close enough. Now take note here, this is for first timers technically, this is slotted and so is the bracket. So when you put it in, make sure you put it in that slot so it can't turn, okay? You don't want this spinning on you. Take your 13 millimeter headed bolt. Let's run it in. The water's heating up as we talk. Okay, and that's what it'll look like. This goes against the engine block like you see here. and the flaps thread into here. I'm gonna go over the flaps after we test this. I hope this works, I don't even know. So let's bring in even closer and let's check the water temperature. Okay, and this is climbing, we're at 100. Okay, now we are at 168, so I made the water a little too hot. It was taking a while for the water to heat up. So let me take this out of there, okay. We'll put this in. Hopefully you can see that. See how it's expanding? That water's hot, so don't bump it with your fingers. See how it expanded? And that's why you want it inside the bracket when you're testing it. Okay, it hit over 160 degrees. It expanded, which pushes the rod up, opening the flaps. And I'll explain that in a minute. I'll bring it over and show you. Now, as it cools down, it'll go ahead and it'll compress on its own, although it might take a little while. There, see that? Hopefully that was in line of sight. There we go. And as it cools down, and it compresses. Hopefully you were in the video. We're gonna do it one more time, okay? See how it expands? That's pushing the rod up. We'll go over that in a second, okay? And then after it starts to cool down,
then it starts shrinking, so to speak. I hope that all made sense to you. Now let's get the shroud and show you exactly what that means. Okay, now let's go over a couple of things here first. Of course. Now, if you recall, I said it threads into the top of this, the rod. Okay, here it is here. You want me to bring you in closer? I'll only keep you in tight for a second here, but the threads on this will thread into this. Okay, and let me thread it on. There's a reason I'm doing this. Oh, goody. I don't want to thread on. Threads are good in there. Come on. Only on film. Only on film does that happen. Okay. So, this is bolted to the engine block. Okay, just so you know where we're at here. There's your alternator. Here's the front of the engine, which is the rear of the car. Okay. This is sitting over your cylinder heads. Okay. The rod comes down through the cylinder heads like you see here. And it hooks to the thermostat. Okay. The thermostat is bolted to the engine block like you see here. Okay. This is in a closed position. Okay, now what we're going to do is go over something briefly. You see the flaps. These are the flaps that control the airflow from the fan with your alternator spinning. The air will come down and cool the cylinder heads and jugs, etc., etc. Okay, so if this is to fail, normally, usually, these fell in an open position, which would be expanded. And those would be open. These need oiled up, okay? And there's no spring on it right now. So they would stay open, okay? Now, when you start your car, this isn't a failed system right now. When you start your car, this is not expanded yet. So it's keeping the flaps closed so no air is cooling the cylinders. As they slowly warm up, okay, the air is coming across the thermostat, warming it up, and it'll expand slowly. When it expands slowly, it opens these flaps up, allowing air to go down and cool the cylinders. Okay, now when this is opened completely, this thing really needs cleaned and oiled, which is fine. It's going to continually keep the cylinder heads and your piston jugs, my brain's everywhere, will keep cooling down. Now, if it needs to, which it will, okay, this will start contracting slightly if it needs to and closes these flaps off and restricts air to let it stay warm. Now let me go over something else just so you have the idea it's on both sides of the engine. Now I'm sure you guys already knew this and ladies but that's on both sides of the motor them flaps. You should have these on even when this is in the full open position a lot of times they're kind of angled slightly to throw air in a certain direction. There is a bar that goes from here to here with a spring and it controls them together. Okay, mine's apart right now. Okay, let's check the water temperature one more time before I finish out this video. I was letting the water cool down a little. It was way too hot. And we are at 158, 160, 162, 164. That's perfect, about 165 degrees, it slowed down. Let's check again and see how we've expanded. Okay, and then let me blow on it. See how quick it'll contract. That is a properly functioning thermostat, okay? And like I said, if you do need one, just go to Awesome Powder Coat. They're a little pricey. Don't buy some generic piece of crap because these are made to fill an opened position which is expanded so that your flaps are open. Okay, and we're going to go over one more thing and I'll let you go. And I know I'm going to get some people in the comments saying, I thought there was something on my nose. <laughs> I don't run one. I live in Arizona or I live in California. I live in Florida. I don't run one. Then don't. That's entirely up to you. 
I'm not being arrogant, I'm not being ignorant, but they're there for a reason. And the reason being, it lets your engine warm up slowly, okay? So that if you, let me put it this way, if you've got these flaps out, take them out and you don't have a thermostat, okay? It takes forever for the engine to warm up no matter what climate you live in, okay? And that causes premature cylinder wear. It really, really does. And if you say, well, I got 50,000 miles, I've never had an issue, good for you. I'm glad. Run the thermostat, please, folks. It regulates how your engine should warm up. And this isn't just about getting heat into the car. It's about your engine operating the way it's supposed to at certain temperatures. Okay, I'll shut up now. All right, that was your video this week. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And remember, it's your car, do what you want. I can only advise you and give you my opinion from research and things that have happened to me in the past. So if you feel the need to not run one, don't, but you really should. Stay tuned next week on Friday night for the next upcoming video. And we're going to be doing oil pressure, oil pressure relief system and a couple other things coming up. We're going to keep rolling along and getting the stroker block ready for the stroker motor we're building. I'll see you next week.